go for Connor. Really do this. Why <laughs> check look good? Um, a lot of the people that I date tend to wear a lot of rings, <laughs> and that's that's fine, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, I've just always been of the belief that wearing a lot of rings is, you know, like weird and fucking dumb. <laughs> like, I just, I see a lot of hand nonsense, I just assume there's a lot of head nonsense. This is a think piece, just feel free to go with me on this. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what it is when I see people with rings. I, um, you know, that's not true, I do. Like, anytime I see a ring, it's designed to tell me a very insecure lie about that person. <laughs> like, you see a ring on this finger, and they're saying, I'm going to be attracted to the same person until one of us is dead, and I'm willing to bet my financial independence on it based on my current feelings about that person. That's a fucking crazy insecure lie. <laughs> you're clapping like you're married, yeah? <laughs> you see somebody with a thumb ring, and they're saying, hey, I am interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you see somebody wearing a pinky ring, and that that just says I sell used ATVs to people with no credit, and that doesn't weigh as much, as conscious as much as <laughs> I saw a guy wearing a Baltimore Ravens ring recently. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, I get that you like them, but I don't think that your love of the Baltimore Ravens had anything to do with them winning the 2013 Super Bowl. <laughs> That joke checks out, right? I don't fact check my bits. <laughs> I saw a, an obese 35-year-old man wearing an authentic Green Lantern ring recently. <laughs> and I was like, that's probably not real. Okay, just bottom line, I think that wearing rings is a little pretentious, and when you wear one, it says something a little insecure and pretentious about you. I bought a ring recently. <laughs> I, I've been going through some shit, so I bought one of those rings that says, this too shall pass. <laughs> and I wanted to believe that, but I saw it like three days ago, and I still haven't seen it. <laughs> so, you know, buyer beware. <laughs> All right, that was my opener. It went as well as it could be expected. Let's just get to know each other a little bit. Um, do any of you have a job? <laughs> they comfortably proportionate response. <laughs> How do I explain my job? It's um. Okay, you know they transfer organs from one hospital to another for like emergency transplants and stuff? So you can imagine there's a lot of safety inspections and legal procedure and paperwork involved with that. Well, my job is I am a waitress at Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. <laughs> Thank you. I'm 27 and my daily work routine for the past three years has been spilling Jimmy Buffett brand tequila and then convincing people that it's my first day. <laughs> it's gotten harder too. They make me wear a three-year pin now. It's a real honor. Uh, any, uh, Clap your hands if you're willing to admit that sometimes, occasionally, you pee in the shower. <laughs> cool, so like, so like, no judgment. <laughs> yeah, you guys are a lot cooler than the women in my gym. <laughs> so, <laughs> dating. <laughs> Ladies, a little life hack. If you're ever on a blind date and your date ends up looking exactly like Dan Aykroyd, don't tell her. <laughs> she won't pay for your half of the meal. <laughs> and them tofu quinoa bowls are expensive, am I right? <laughs> that joke was to let you know that I'm gay, right? Like, that was obvious, right? The things were subtle. <laughs> like, I didn't know if we're made evident by the fact that my date was a lady blues brother. <laughs> so, tag it was a vegan nonsense to land that plane. <laughs> And dating in queer circles just fucking blows, right? Thank you, ladies that were making out before the show. <laughs> I see you, what up? <laughs> and it sucks though, because you go on any given dating website and of the tens of thousands of women profiles, you'll find maybe 15 profiles for like attractive, sane, decent-hearted lesbians. And five of those profiles are me catfishing the other 10, so just fucking <laughs> are into astrology. Uh, have you ever been on a first date with somebody and the first thing they say to you is like, well, I'm a cancer. <laughs> and you didn't realize that they were warning you? <laughs> like, you thought they were saying something cute and stupid like, I was born in July, so I got to a divorce day in Pilsen who tells me that's why I'm moody, but also I dance your ass. <laughs> no, they were saying, hey, just so you know, you're from now, my presence in your life's gonna make your hair fall out in clumps. <laughs> Anyone else in love? <laughs> I've been doing a long distance relationship. My girlfriend uh, moved to Israel two months ago. She's interning for a nonprofit, like a real asshole. 
and the distance is starting to get to us, and she confronted me about it recently. She said, you're already such an emotionally guarded person, Casey, and the fact that you don't open up at all, especially now, I don't know, I just don't feel that my emotional needs are being met in this relationship anymore because you won't open up. And I was like, okay, since we're opening up, I'm someone who establishes comfort and trust with somebody through touch and contact, and the fact that I don't wake up next to you makes me uneasy. So I guess you could say that my physical needs aren't being met in this relationship anymore. And she said, thank you so much. Can you tell me more about how that makes you feel? And I was like, <laughs> you'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> trying to shrink my head, you silly witch. <laughs> She dumped me a week ago. <laughs> hey, you know what? If you can't handle me at my worst, good call, babe. <laughs> a coworker recently said to me, Casey, there's something wrong with you. And I was like, true, but you also work here. <laughs> and she said, no, if you've never even fucked a guy, how do you know you're a lesbian? You know. And I was like, how is this a conversation I'm still having with people? And why are we having it in front of my boss? <laughs> standard rhetorical argument usually works. I was like, well, you've never had sex with a woman, right? And that's fine, but you just know you like men. It's just like that. And she's like, yeah, but that's different. You're supposed to like men. That's biology. And I was like, ha, 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 gross. <laughs> How do I explain this? All right, well, Jocelyn, her name's Jasmine, but I don't want to respect her privacy. <laughs> your best friend's a girl, right? And she said, yeah. And I was like, is your best friend really pretty? And she said, yeah. I'm like, you ever get drunk with your best friend? She does something perfect and hilarious and awesome, and you get drunk with her, and like the light's hitting her just so, and your guys' song is playing in the background, and you just feel weird so you kiss her. <laughs> <laughs> and Jocelyn was cool. She just looked at me and went, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, awesome. That's friendship, so that's normal. But like, you know that moment after you kiss her and you pull away and you imagine brushing your nose against your cervix? <laughs> <laughs> and Jocelyn looked at me and she said, no. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, well I do. That's all I'm thinking about all the time. It's like a little time, and that's how I know I'm gay. And I know I should be thinking about other things like the results of like the midterm elections and the fact I really don't know how my health insurance works, but I care on my head around any of that shit. And my primary objective is like just a fucking burrow, a fucking burrow puss. So I'm either a lesbian or a Doberman trapped in a lesbian's body. <laughs> that's just biology. <laughs> That was a lot for a room full of strangers. <laughs> you got to know me really well in five minutes, and I really appreciate it. Good night, guys.